What's up, what's up, everybody? The Smoking Word Podcast is always brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. You want to support the podcast, go to CasaTheRock.com right now. We got T-shirts, slides, ashtrays. You want it, we got it. Support the show, support the movement. You know how we do it. Um, U.S. only right now at CasaTheRock.com. And for everybody else around the planet, CasaTheRock.eu. Tell Theo I sent you and he'll take care of you. What up, Theo? But um, shout out to everybody who's been supporting me throughout the years. And we got a lot more coming. So stay tuned. Um, Always shout out to the Patreon family for keeping me fresh and sexy. Listen, we're about to drop more videos, um, more YouTubes, more exclusives. Um. I can't say it enough, and I'm going to keep saying it. Thank you for, for holding me down. Thank you for supporting the movement and for and everybody else out there in podcast land. You should thank these motherfuckers, too, because they keep the magic going. So um, salute to uh, the fam. Patreon, you know what's up. We got a lot of dope episodes coming. And everybody out there, you would know who they are if you are Patreon. So if you want to support the movement even more, if you got that jobby job and you really feeling like, yo, you know what you want? You really feel in the podcast and you want to keep it rocking. Patreon.com slash the smoking word. I'm going to say it again for all you cavemen and cave women and cave days and cave whatever genders. <laughs> Patreon.com slash the smoking word. That's how you invest. You invest in the show. If you like what you hear. This keeps it going. It keeps more videos going, more exclusive things happening. So we love you, Patreon. And follow me on Instagram. Follow the smoking word on Instagram. Everybody, we are about 100 or so um, subscribers short of our first plateau in YouTube land. So listen, if you got love for the podcast and listen, we need this to happen. I want everybody to go, not just subscribe to the podcast. I want you to go to YouTube, Smoking Word TV, and subscribe. Listen, it's free. And we need, I want to hit that plateau. I want the next time I do a podcast to announce everybody that we hit that fucking plateau. So we about 100, 100 so people subscribe is short. Once we hit that, that means we're able to get to the next level of podcast land um, 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 membership and just um, it gets the podcast around to more people. So, you know, again, everybody subscribe, Smoking Word TV, subscribe. Shout out to everybody who already subscribed. Enjoy the fo- the footage. And what could I say on this episode of the Smoking Word podcast? I mean, I don't know. I even know what to say. We wouldn't have this podcast if it wasn't for him and probably two, three other people. My brother. One of the godfathers of this thing of ours, the one and only Roger Moret Agnostic Front. Let's set this shit off. Do you hear me? Yeah, oh shit. The leader, the leader of the gang has entered the building. <laughs> Hello, brother. How are you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I give you a look it, look it, look it. Hold on, standing ovation, standing ovation. That's it on the hair. Standing, you're the first and only standing fucking ovation ever on podcast territory. This is what stigma would do all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's po- That's like you used to do that in the 20s, you know? Yeah. Listen, what's up? How, what's how you up, doing? Man? How are you? How first you of all, I, I hate to say it, but you look good. Really? Yeah, no. Yo, yo. I hate to, I, I hate to say it, but you look good. <laughs> no, but listen, you know, the face tells, you know how that your face is good. It ain't, you know, chopped up. You know, people look torn yeah. down, you know, being sick and shit. And that tells a lot. Your skin. I learned that from all the, 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 the straight edge uh, PMA dudes that helped me out with the food. You know, but it's true. 
you could tell on the skin, you know, how people are living. Yo, thank you. I appreciate that. It's man, it's been a crazy, bro. <laughs> And I'm and I and for everybody out there, I haven't talked to Roger. I would just drop a message because, you know, with everything going on, I know how that shit is. It's a fucking, it's a pain in the. It's crazy enough for yourself, let alone you have to repeat it. I know exactly how it goes with just everything when, everything was going on and whatever. But like, um, um how you doing, dude? With everything, I know you're doing. <laughs> after yesterday, I know you're doing way better. Because um, hey, I've seen hey, some hey. disturbing things in my life recently, but whatever. That's, 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 that's <laughs> but how you? Everybody was asking and been because they even asked me, "Yo, how's Roger?" I go, "Yo, to be honest with you, I think he's okay." I drop a line, I stay out of it. You know, you, people need time and space. But what's up? I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I had a lot of people hit me up as little spots, kind of at the right time too. You know, it's um, it's man. It, <sighs> I'm good now, but I was in a place where, where I just needed to be in my own head, just, you know, wrap around everything, wrap around what's going on between everything that's going on in life and then throw this shit at you, you know, yeah. like, I was not in a good place, you know, but, you know, um, man, I sit back and think about it now, like I've been through a lot of shit, you know, that I don't appreciate it, man, but been through a lot of hard shit and I'm like, man, what? I, I keep going through all this fucking crazy hard shit, but my, my head's pretty together. You know, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of nights you stay up thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. You know, when you hear cancer, you first thing you think of, damn, you're going to die tomorrow. You know? Sure. But um, when you got kids, you start thinking and thinking and thinking about, man, you know, somehow, some way, I pull through. I feel I figured I gotta pull through, and and that was the same situation back in the late '80s. You know, when I, when I got incarcerated, I was like, "You pull through. You you hold your head up, head up high, and pull through." You said, "Yeah, you need to be by yourself." I'll tell you the truth. Even back then, in, in, in the late '80s, when I did that, when, when I had to go through incarceration, it was good for me to be by myself. I needed to. Yeah. You know, like I need to just let shit sink in. Yeah, it's hard because. You know, we're the last people when it's happening to you. It's sometimes we're the last people that it sinks into, you know, like, yeah, man. you know, because I know I know how you, you must have been kind of how you must have been feeling like, all right, when does this shit end? It's exactly. like <clears throat> how much more shit and how much harder are you going to make it? You know exactly. what I mean? You know, I know. They, you know, they say like, you know, they say, you know, you, you, the challenges you get, they only give you as much as you could take. And man, they fuck yeah. with me big time, bro. Like, you, I, you, I, you, Roger, you what are you telling edit, me now? I, I know, no, I beyond relate. I the same convo I had with Maddie Henderson to the T. What you're telling me, I was telling Maddie. I was like, okay. you know, I, I was to the point yelling. I was like, all right, you want me to carry everything? Okay, but how much more you want me to fucking carry? Yeah, man. I'm gonna carry it. But how much fucking more before? Are you giving me more than you gave anybody else? I just want to know that also. Like, because that's how it feels. It feels that way. And you know yeah. what? To be honest with you, they do give you more than everybody else because they give you what you could take. They bring you to that point. And some people can't get out of it, bro. It's, it's, it's wild, you know? But, you yeah. know. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, a billion percent. And, and, and I think the same shit. I think the same shit. I go, man, some people don't get out of it, you know, like because, you know, when we're in it, because I hit bottom too. when you're in the bottom, you're like, oh, you don't think you ever get out. You're like, no, this is this is reality now. And then mm -hmm. the minute you start seeing I told I told everybody this when my when, when Sue was sick and my mom's went over and, you know, when you're angry, you know, you don't want to hear shit. But I remember at one point, you know, she came with that rest in peace to my mom. She came with that old Spanish, you know, uh, you know, being, and I was really pissed at the moment. She was like, listen, you know, the greatest thing God gave us, and this is for you heathens out there, if you believe in God or not, whatever you want to call them, uh, six armed, a fat Buddha, whatever it is to you. She goes, the greatest thing God gave us was tomorrow. And, you know, we heard these sayings, and, I, and at the moment, I remember being like, in my head, I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. But you know what happened was, the next day was, Okay, the next day, um, uh, um, she soon needed some or something needed to be done, and I was there to do it. I said, okay, boom, we got that omission oh, account. Okay, the next day there was, you know, you saw that every day there was uh, uh, 
uh, there was something positive that could come out of the day. And then you start saying, okay, you know, you, 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 um, we tend to, to keep ourselves in the fucking holes sometimes, you know, like, yeah, cause shit's exactly. so heavy. It's so heavy. And that's what I, I, I kind of did that a little bit with this one, you know, but I did, I did. I really did. I didn't want to see nobody. I didn't want to talk to nobody. Yeah. I did a lot. I did a lot of walks by myself. I did a lot of I self isolation. Yeah. And then, you know, and that's when, when, when everything got finally put out there and, and, and where was it to give me my space? I'm grateful that a lot of people gave me my space. Cause yeah, I know a lot of people worldwide. Nobody concerned, bro. Everybody's like, whoa, what's happening? Well, and I get it, but I really yeah. didn't want to talk about anything. Of course. I just wanted, just wanted to be in my space. And and the only person I talked to were doctors. So many yeah. fucking doctors, so many fucking injections, surgeries, scans. I, I've got more poison in my body. I'm surprised I'm walking. Yeah. Anything in the world. You see, squatting all those years built that yeah. immune system up. You see, I, I think that fucking CBGB's bathroom is a <laughs> miracle. Bro. Oh, for sure, the cure. And, and that's because I think I'm the only one that drank water out of it, bro. Who <laughs> <laughs> used to gargle with it? You're the only guy who's a gargle brush teeth with it. Yeah. Now let me ask you this though. The 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 because again, when it comes to your own, you know, we, we both hit um um um. I mean, you hit this type of shit too, but in the last couple of years, we both hit a lot of hardship, but different. Like you hit it with your health and I've, I've hit it with, you know, people around me. The, the, the first, the first scare that you had, the one that you, that's on the, on the movie, you know, that with the, with that stuff. Cause that was some, that's also some shit that, you know, again, you hear anything, all that, like a cancer word, heart, anything with your heart, your eyes, you know, it's shit gets lungs, you know, it's scary. Like, um, this time around, um, it hit you a lot harder than than that first than the first thing, or different. It hit me harder um, because there was a lot of shit going on, bro. There was oh. a lot. I mean, come on, you know, like um, we just got off a great freaking tour, 2019. You know, business tour, killing it, top of the world. Dude, our record, our record, get loud, just came out, and we we finally did all this really cool stuff for the stage. It looks nice and come home and bam you know this whole covid shit you know and then um, then you know we all musicians we're all thinking at first we're like okay whatever whatever you know then we start to think you're like fuck this is our livelihood too like now we have to we're providing for children we're doing so much you know and i've never been the type of guy that asks for anything i really never asked for help you know me i i know I, that that's a I fact I on my own and I, I was really uncomfortable even with my friends that did sit up to go for but I'm very grateful now because man, when I got hit with those medical bills, I was blown oh, away. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. And I and I know exactly. And I'm and I'm glad you said it because I know how you are and I know how are we're not built like that, you know, and we're grateful, but we're not that type of people. We're grateful, but we oh. you know, we don't want we don't like bringing people into our problems. Exactly. And we don't like we don't like bringing people into our problems and we and we just I don't know. We, we we're strugglers, man. We're fighters. We like we, we're handlers. I think a lot of that is in built to us from our generations, our, our, you know, our family generation. Yeah. Look, yeah. I came to this country, man. You know, yeah. four four or five years old. My mom, three kids, didn't know a word of English. The economy, and I said, these are things. This is just the stuff that came to my mind and all my thoughts of being by myself. Yeah. This past year and a half, or whatever it was, was man. Look of everything I've accomplished, or my brothers and sisters have accomplished. We are, we are that, we are the people that yeah, that come from a whole other country. Struggle, man. We struggle our asses. You read my book and everything. Absolutely, and, I know. And 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 you sit back and think about, well, we, you know, we've come to such a good place right now, and hopefully our children could go even further. We do everything for our kids, everything. Our kids are our life. You know that. Yeah, yeah. The American dream is what you're saying, you know, to be yeah. able to come and, and make something from nothing. You know, well, all the problems we have, but, you know, I don't get political. None. This is, yeah, we like having fun with this and just info and just touch and base. But we know that as whatever, whatever, you know, we are also our, our we can speak for our generation, our family's yeah. generation. They came with nothing and made something. And if they were working and, and they would were make like, something. Yeah. And they were persistent. You're going to yes. do, you're not, you're not going to, you know, you need to learn to speak English and you need to do this. You, need that. you know, 
and 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 he said, I sat back and I started thinking like, wow, you know, I'm grateful, grateful that I've I've come so far, I've done so much, and man, grateful of my band, my friends worldwide, you know, all, every one of my accomplishments. They didn't, it may not be the greatest thing in the world. You know, I used to sit and think like, what, you know, like, man, you know, when I retire, what do I got? You know, this is a hustle. We live in a hustle. Me and you, you, we know this. We're not those, we're not with those really lucky, lucky, yeah. lucky, lucky bands, bro. Yeah. We hustle. We yeah. fucking hustle, bro. Yeah. I know. And yeah. then I started thinking, and I used to go every people be like, oh man, if it wasn't for you, for victim and pain for this. So I, I figured my message to my, my reasoning for being here was to help others get through struggles and shit. You know, yeah. and, no, and for sure. And it's important because especially with you guys and, and, and for what you've done, unfortunately, we don't got the millions that we should like that we all or, uh, or whatever it is, the number that we need that we would, would be comfortable for us to, uh, for our kids to never have to worry, whatever exactly. it is. But the, the, the great thing is and, and, and which what, what you've done. Same thing with what I was lucky to have that in our time of need, when we needed something, our people know the type of people we are and, 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 and they were able to, to, to make that move for us. Cause the same thing with me when they, you know, the, the people helped bury my, you know, my family. And it wasn't because of me. They went out and said, no, we got to do this for you. We know how you are Hoya, same way, but that was because of all that we've done. Same thing what you've done. That's why people around the world want to do that. And they should not because you know, you're obligated to do it, but they want to do something for, you know, I see how much just during COVID, how much music got people through shit, how they, they send me stories. So let alone, you know, be, uh, you know, one of the guys that are part of the genre that these guys base their life upon. So, you know what I mean? That they want to do something. That's why I was like, you know, it was good. Well, they, they gave back in a, in a very generous and loving way. And I'm grateful for it. Like I told you, you know, um, of course it, it was hard first. You know, I, 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 you know, I'm like, fuck, I guess I got, what am I doing now? I have to survive. I'm doing this. I got all these, I did a dumb move in the beginning. I don't even want to talk about it, but anyway, my dumb move cost me a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. This is why I'm in where I'm in. It was a dumb move because I did, you know, anyway, it's a long story. I end up selling my car and some things that I love. A lot of things. I'm like, where am I, where is this going to stop? You know? And, and I was doing it cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing. If I had to, I'll go back to a cardboard box. You know me. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I was just loving that cardboard box. We living in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 It ain't nothing. But, uh, be known. Yeah. but my friends were like, no man, you know, people are going to step up for you. Trust, trust us, you know, between it was, that was something that was set up between Lawrence and Gallo. Right. Gotta trust people step up and they'll help out. They want to help out. Um, I, I know you don't want to do this, but let us do this for you. And I said, and I finally give in. And, it's, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm really Hell happy. yeah, absolutely. I would have told him, even if he said, no, do it. Of yeah. course he's going to say he don't want it. I hear I was, I, you know, I know how that goes. No, but we need it. You it's know, just yeah. that it, it was a personal thing, you know, the personal health thing. And I, I just didn't want to talk about it. You know? I know. Hell yeah. It's I, I know uh, it, you're, we got we already show ourselves with our music, let alone really go in when we get into health and real deep family issues. Same thing. Me putting out, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff about even from my, you know, my wife passing my mom, my brother, you know, there's a lot sometimes, you know, everybody knows, but I don't like taking the same thing. These are things, certain things that we hold different. Again, I think it's our generation too about so yeah. how we talk about things and certain things you talk about and you don't do. And, you know, it's just, I'm the same way, you know, we, we have a lot of pride too, you know, yeah. and, 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 um, and let me tell you something you've been through. I mean, I'm, I'm like, my thing is like a walking, walking in beach. <laughs> nah. to you've been through brother. And I feel for you. And, 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 and some of the stuff you were going through was the same time I was going through shit. So, it was hard for me to 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 like communicate entirely with people because I wasn't entirely there. I know? already knew. I already knew. I, I, I already you know knew that. So, I was passing my shit through my brother. I, like, I know, and mm -hmm. I knew through your mm -hmm. brother the same mm -hmm. shit, and that's yeah. why I would even tell Rudy. I would pass back. I was like, "Are you yeah. talking to Roger? Tell Roger." But I said, "I ain't gonna cost it. Let yeah. you." And I knew, and around that same time, and you reached out, and I know that's why I know how it goes. And I'm like, you know, yeah. and my whole shit was just like, yo, let me know, you know, but what, you know, if I talked to Freddie, I would hear whatever was cracking. 
Oh, I would see a thing of you. Well, where is he? Okay, where's where's he at now in this? I know something's up. You know, I hear, okay, he got something crap. Okay, let's wait to hear what's what. But, you know, since we haven't been all together throughout these months, we don't see each other like the band. So we yeah, wouldn't man. hear news as much or as fast as we usually do. So, you know, the, the one thing I was like, I heard something. And the next thing I was like, yo, shit's really serious. I was like, what? You know, it's kind of like, like, come on, dude. Like, you know, it's just I felt the same thing. Too many things over the head at once. Exactly, brother. You know, and then I was like, but, you know, I, you know, again, um, I, I, I'm a religious, I'm a spiritual guy. I don't like to say religious because I don't know. The, yeah. I don't know the definition of people this. And I'm going to start getting emails about the Pope and all the shit. I don't and that. I believe in God, whatever your God is, but I believe in things. I believe in a force or whatever. And I really fucking believe that. We one. Well, we were meant to carry this heaviness for whatever reason is, but we were also given why I, I think we were chosen this because we were also given children. And I think um, if it wasn't for them, I, I could almost speak for you. I don't know how, how that would have been a big power loss for you. And I would definitely hands down not have made it. I would have who knows what I've done if I didn't have my children. Hands down. They're the exactly. reason I live. Exactly. Because, you know, we would have probably went buck wild. That's what I'm saying. And I think God gave or whatever you want to call them or force that be, you know, again, people think um, everything is supposed to be like magic. You're just giving, giving. I think we're giving things in life from whatever and how we use these tools. Our children, now you can love your children or you can neglect your children. And if you love your children, they're going to give back to you. And you know when they're going to give back to you? When you fucking need them. And you know what? Enough said. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. I think God, you know, my fucking kids, I'm like, damn, I go, I think about the people that don't have them. I'm like, fuck, I got something to, when I feel weak, okay, I can look at them. I said, okay, now I can't be weak. You know, yeah. some people don't got that, which is tough. Know. You know? It's true. It's, it's really magical. It's really, you know, and like you say, uh, my kids are still little, but a proven fact is my oldest, Nadia, you know, she's been, yeah. she's been tough there with me, you know, she's yeah. been, she calls yeah, she's me. Big too, you, not yeah. yeah, she's always, she was concerned and, 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 and just checking up on me, like you know, that her giving back and big time giving back when she could, when she's old enough. Like, I don't expect my little kids, they, they, you know, it was already trouble for them to figure out what's going on. Oh, they, yeah. That's they they came to visit me in the hospital and they like, they, you could see the fear in their eyes. Horrible. You could see like, and then it had to be escorted because you're not, we was in line <laughs> more than two people. So my wife had to stay downstairs. Some random dude had to bring them up and bring them down. And, and they just see me laying there and I could barely talk. And my wife is not there to help. And they just, with their eyes, like, daddy, are you okay? I'm like, I'm shaking. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm worried, you know? And it's just wild. Yeah. That's uh... Yeah, it's a, you know, and, and and all this shit ha again. The reason why I think um, it's more than coincidence for certain people. Why I don't know why us chosen yeah. or why this, but during the worst time, some of the heaviest shit to happen like that. Why your children would have to go through a situation where okay, not only that they have to do it in a situation where the times are like that, where they can't even have their mom there, somebody to be like chill. Same thing. Some of the homeboys that. My homeboy's mom passed away during the beginning of this shit. He couldn't even see her get buried. Yeah. You know, like, Horrible. you know, I was lucky we were able to do, I, you know, we worked. Thank God. Also, the way, you know, you know, where my my um, where we had to bury my family members is, was in my old neighborhood. And, you know, the laws vary in the hood and we were able to make things happen. Yeah. And people, were able, you know what I mean? But, I know. you know, it's it's it's, it's it, uh, it was a rough time for anything to happen. You know, like because rest restrictions and especially being in the hospital. I know people that had babies. They couldn't be there to see their baby. I was like, imagine, you know, I was only allowed. I was only allowed to have one visitor the whole time. The second time for my surgery, which was my wife. She was there all the time and couldn't nobody, which I was OK. I didn't want to see nobody. I want nobody to see me in the condition I was in. Oh. And um, and I remember going in for another a third time for like, you know, they constantly going in there for shit. 
outpatient shit too. And I remember being the last outpatient person they accepted. It was a whole line of other people because a new variant, Delta variant or something like that. And I was like the last person. You know, like, we can't take anybody else. And there's people lined up that have to go. And they're like, we can't because our rooms are busy right now. We can't take anybody. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell, man? Like, oh, I guess I got lucky. And I got it was an outpatient thing. I was lucky I didn't have to stay. Yeah, like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck full that. body scan of this outpatient to make sure everything was right. I was like, man, this is crazy times. Yeah, it's crazy. And and and, and right now, and um and AZ house things in general, it's lightening up a little bit as far as moving around and, and like, you know, it's been lightened here for a while. Yeah. You know, like, you know, ever since they lifted the mask, I, I mean, uh, the, ever since the vaccines came they got, out, they got lightened. Everything's open. Every single thing's open. And, um, you know, people wear masks. Some people don't wear masks, you know, yeah. some people vaccinated, some people are unvaccinated. You know? Yeah. This, I guess, is a, People have their choices. Me, my, you know, me, myself, and my family, you know, we go out, we wear our masks. We have little kids, so we don't want to get them sick or nothing like that. Me, you know, I don't know what could kill me at this point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I, I'm glowing. I glow in the dark. And you know what I tell motherfucker? I tell everybody, I go, you do whatever the fuck you need to do yeah, to for feel yourself. for you to be you. And to move around freely and feel that I don't care what it is. I don't care if you want to wear bunny ears with a yeah. fucking, you know, I don't care. Yeah, I'm the same way, you know, like, man, I watch, I watch a lot of crazy shit go down, you know, we watch a lot of friends hate each other and stuff like that. Well, you know, like, listen, man, it's always been like, it's your body, your, your soul. You do what the fuck you want. And nobody, like, listen, nobody no stop with no, yeah. Nobody yeah. was stopping each other when they were banging heroin, when they shoot, when they're yeah. doing blow, when they do it. Nobody's stopping nobody. If anything, they're feeding each other. OK, enough said. My whole point being is let's if, if we really want to sit down and nitpick on what's what, like we really got to sit down and look at ourselves first before mm -hmm. we start talking about anything like I know I got a big mouth. So if it ain't about THC playing bass groove <laughs> or talking shit. I got no place being around it. That's it. You know, but I know that. I know that. If I start telling you about stocks, do not listen to me. I'm not a <laughs> stock uh, broker or whatever. If I start telling you about out of space, I do not work for NASA. I'll nope. let you know right off the grip. <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. know about I'll set it off? Yeah, I wrote that. Okay, I can let you know all you know. Yeah. You want to know about, uh, uh, how much THC uh, uh, blueberry kush guy could probably help you know that. You want to know, but you know, everything I don't know. And I'm like, uh, my whole point without getting too, too into it, I agree. I go, dude, we're like the shit we just talked about was so much shit like that, that uh, that affects, uh, look, the other thing affects us, the big picture. This yeah. affects us. This real yeah. shit, real shit. You know, the end, you know, I, I, and, and I've been telling a lot of our people this or a lot of I've been saying this is what should be. I go, you know, everybody's trying to change the world from the outside in when they got to start from the inside out. Yeah, if this, they shouldn't try to change it, try to make a difference anyway. It's too hard to change the world. Exactly. So much hatred, bro. Yeah. And everybody's jumping into something like, I, I, I mean, I just. It came to a point where I needed to focus so much on myself. I, I don't go on Facebook or any shop, barely do anything on Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, I because, I, I, you know, my, I need to secure my home life, my life, myself. I need to make sure I'm mentally sane. Oh, yeah. To, and mentally healthy. Because if I'm not healthy, how how's everything else going to move on? You know, my kids and everything like that. So I just shut everything off. I was like, shut shut the whole world off. I'm like, yeah, I got to do it myself. I got to get healthy. A number one, because I already went through two two major surgeries. Yeah, yeah. And now I got to get healthy because without me, this that's, shit ain't going nowhere right now. You know, not exactly. That's been my mentality. You know, and 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 then I will get healthy. I'm starting to. Um, it's still, I'm still recovering. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, those Daisy Dukes get wet, you know? Yeah. Listen, listen, Let, the doctor said no more. You will never wear Daisy Dukes again, ever. Only for basketball. <laughs> you let me wear it for that, basketball. Now, let, now let me ask you this. Um, 
is, do they got you on any specific diet? Should they tell you about working out now? Because now this is why you, got, you got this kind of different things going on. What? Yeah, this is why I wanted to talk to you, man. You oh. look good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not Yo, funny. man. Seriously, bro. I'm so proud of you. You look great. Thank you, look you man. I was telling my sister, you know, you know my son. Of course, my bro. I was like, Mara, have you seen Hoya? And I sent photos. She goes, that's Hoya. I'm like, that's Hoya. She goes, what happened to the rest of him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. You, inspirational, again, brother. You know, inspirational. You is, know how it is, right? You know, right? Again, same kind of shit. I know probably why you did, how, how easy you got there. You know. It was right here. Yeah. And I know what you went through. Yeah. Because and, of that. And you channeled it, and you channeled it in a good way. Yeah, I had way. to. You know why? Again, if I yeah. didn't have my sons, I would have probably went the opposite way. Oh, I want a guy, you know, just let's wild out. You know, we're extreme dudes. You know, it's funny because I used to always say, yo, if I ever find out I got cancer, I'm going to die. I'm going to rob all these banks. Fuck yeah, it. exactly. Go nuts. But here we go. I did find out. I did, you know, I thank God I didn't die. I ain't robbed nobody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, exactly. No, exactly. No, and I hear you in the same thing. I'm like, you know what? Uh, hands kid. down, no matter what, I, you, no matter I saw my, I, my mom's getting sick, and oh, everybody. Well, for people that don't know, you know, I'm a single father. My oldest son, my my wife passed away a year after my son was born, my first son, and my mother basically raised him. And I saw when she was getting sick where it was going because I already went through it with my 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 wife, rest in peace. Right, right. So I already saw what was going. So it's always been in the back of my head. But you know how that is, you you know, it's in the back of your head, but you kind of let life and you let it be blurry to when she it started. Crunch time came and it, things got really serious with her. And I kind of saw where it was going. I knew I said um, my son got nobody now. Like after that, like I go and I'm not going to leave him an orphan. I said, you know, again, I believe in God. I said, God takes you when he takes you, but I'm not going to give him a head start. Mm -hmm. I said that. I said, not on while I got of any physical, I go the any physical um, thing that I got control of is myself at this moment right now. So you better start if you if you really say you want to live for your kids, you better start doing things that will make you live for those kids. So I started punching the bag. I, I started watching what I eat. I started, you know what? I add, I say it all the time. Adam Blake, that's my secret weapon. I'd hit oh, up Adam. Adam, yeah. Adam just your weapon. Okay. Yeah. I hit up Adam Blake. Yo, Adam Blake, you know, I got a head start on stuff, but look at this is where I'm at. What could I do for this? He gave me tips on workouts, on foods. But, and, you know, and again, like us, we're lucky that we don't got the, the, the paper money, but we, we got the access to the world of knowledge through people like that, like mm -hmm. in the health world. You know, you know, I'm Roger for you. You know, I'm mean? look, I'm getting goose pimples because. When you when when it just got out that you had cancer, you know how many people, hardcore dudes, cannabis growers that hit me up that were like, hit me up and let Roger know we have the the, the oil that oil that was made for that guy. I swear they were like, please, I don't know if he does, but if he wants, get at me. And I yeah. was like, man, you know what that is? Like, you know, yeah, to have that, I was like, dude, that's that's gold. That's fucking diamonds. You know, to have people mm -hmm. like that, we had that to have that they will reach coming to me like, yo, if he does hit me up, if he wants to fuck and just having that, I was like, man, it's great sometimes, you know, like, you I know, you, bro. like in that so, situation. So like, yeah, like I was saying, going back to you, I'm like, wow. and it was inspiring because I'm going through my shit and I lost a lot of weight at one point. Yeah. And uh, I went, you know, I went down to a lot for me. I mean, I was I was like 170, which I'm normally really like 185, you know, what wow. I like. Yeah, but, yeah. But I started the journey at around, yeah, I started the journey like at 200, 201, something like that. I dropped all the way down, of course, normal. Yeah. And then what, because of my second surgery and all the difficulties, I had to go on a super high, <laughs> high, um, uh, calories super high um um wow high calorie diet man i want one of those because it could, no I, I mean no but the wrong calories i the, the, the put it this way what the doctor said this is definitely not going to be the time for ever to die right now for the next few months the shit that we're putting in me it's like it's like i might as well eat butter yeah you know, gotcha just heavy fat yeah. butter yeah gotcha and then boom, I went up to 210, which I'm uncomfortable at, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to go back. And when you hit my age, 
I don't know how old you are right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you're close. Yeah, 40. Yeah, it goes slow. Yeah, I got 10 on you probably. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about to hit 58. Wow. And I'm like, fuck, how am I going to get rid of this? Before all this, I was bike riding 10 miles a day. I'm, you know, I'm, my, you, I'm yeah. on my bike. Boom, 10 miles daily, daily, 10 miles hustling, 50 miles an hour. I was walking two miles a day with my dog. Yeah, you always moved. You were never doing, like stay yeah, still. Yeah, you know, also yeah. now I can't walk. I can't I bicycle. Are you kidding me? So I just sat around the sofa with all kinds of shit, intravenous shit going in. I mean, doctors coming in every two days and changing this, changing that, taking this and other thing. Then, oh, now you have to go to the hospital because this is this infection or this ain't working. I'm out to hospital like fucking 10 times, you know? And then um, and then next thing you know, I can't do none. And I really couldn't do none. Like I tried, and then just when he gave me the okay to walk, I was so happy, right? So I went outside, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go walk. And I overdid it. I, I only walked partial. I walked like, I want to tell you, maybe I walked like half a mile. I was dying. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, let me take this shortcut because I don't know if I'm going to make it home. You know, because you have to do it all again. Yeah. But it's kind of me mentally messed me up. I'm like, man, how am I ever going to get back? You know? Yeah. I, I went and I, I did, I was allowed, because I couldn't lift more than, first it was five pounds, the second time it was 10 pounds. I just got my release. But I can't go more than like 20 pounds. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a lot of abdominal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Core work. Got, yeah, yeah. Core. Yeah, I got to build all that up. It's a mess down there, you know? Yeah. And then um, I, um, you know, I, I, I tried bike riding. I overdid that like an idiot. I jumped on my bike. It felt uncomfortable. But I, I said, let me do it. I only did half of what I normally did. Uh-huh. But for some stupid reason, I was just going because I'm like enjoying it. And I was going at my normal speed. Yeah. I didn't even notice. And boom, I ruined it. I messed that up. So then I, I did a jujitsu. I went to, I did a class, you know, my wife trained, you know, teaches and she was, don't worry about it. You know, we'll make sure you're, you're with somebody that you're safe, which was true. And it took me to Gracie university and I got my promotion, which was nice. Cause it's been a long, long time. Yeah. And, and, and I was due for my promotion right before all this shit happened. So it was nice. And, you know, everybody was very concerned and very, very, very cool, yeah. you know. And uh, I could start doing stuff now, but I got to build up, build up a lot. So well, I was going to talk to you yeah. after all this podcast shit. Oh, I was yeah. Talk to you, be like, hey, what are you, what are you doing? You know, what, what's, what's your crazy secret weapon to drop those quick, fast ones and go, go, go. Yeah, you know? yeah. My, my main thing in general, I mean, Adam Blake was the thing, but where I lost a lot of the weight where, as far as for losing weight was the food. That food, shit, right? Yeah, straight no, up. Don't eat sugar, I, no eat salt. No, no, eat. no, it's, I straight up ate broccoli, chicken breast, broccoli and fish, or just vegetables. Yeah. You know, that's it. I didn't eat a chicken thigh because that's high high calories and more fat. No skin. Literally, chicken breast, turkey, fish, and grill a uh, grilled or roasted vegetables. I fuck it. When you do that, I, I people always say the diet. You know, we always hear it's the diet, the diet. It's yeah, a yeah. fucking fact. Now, when you work out, okay, now four tires moving instead of two. It's gonna move faster, so obviously you know your gains are. But I've 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 learned that. Well, look, I, I got to a point where I'm able to see gains, or even when I gain muscle, or if I gain more fat again, or more whatever, I could feel it and I could tell. And a lot of it is from the food, you know, a mm -hmm. big part of it. Even now, I started because all right, right now I'm at two thirty. When when I first lost all my weight, I got down to two o five, right? When I played the first New York show, I was like real life but i was i felt frail i was real yeah. thin and i i could tell my head felt too big i got a big head i thought mm -hmm. i was gonna fall over but i said man i look too frail i i want to look sturdier and that i said right after that show i said i'm gonna start lifting weights and then i hit up adam blake and say okay what could i start doing blah 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 long story short now i'm 230 but I feel good, you know, like a solid 230. I gained more size. And again, was high protein, low carbs, and 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 just being consistent with moving, you know, mm -hmm. uh, my body, you know, because I'm a lazy dude. You know, that's why I tell people, they're like, you know, they, give me your workout plan. I go, look, I'm, I'm the furthest guy from a trainer, dude, or whatever. But I learned this, that lazy shit, we got to stop making excuses because I made them for many, 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 many years. Yeah. I'm too busy. I got this. I don't got time. That's all bullshit. 
You know why? I'll tell you why, because you do exactly what I do. We always take care of everybody else, yeah. but us. we're last. Yeah. I'm last. <laughs> I'm last. I'll, I mean, even if it's time to feed everybody, I give I give my wife a plate this big. You know that. Whatever you, your, your brother is like big. that. You're like that. I'm like that. Yeah, 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 that's I'm last. And, and we fuck ourselves great. up. Yeah. That's why we get fuck ourselves up. Everybody got braces. Everybody looks great. But me, I've still got my whack ass, crazy ass teeth. I, yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I know. It's it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Always with, with last. Always yeah, you know, everybody and, else. And then we find out and then it's too late, you know. But then it was like, I found out doing that. But then I said, you know, OK, one, they were like, um, I, it got to the point where it was, I heard something I never thought I would hear in my weight loss. So I never started losing weight because I hit a certain amount of pounds. You saw I was always a big guy. Yeah. Like I said, it, uh, uh, you know, many times I've been lucky in life that I never needed it for women or some. I've been lucky to have very open minded, beautiful women who loved me for my <laughs> sexiness and whatever. But it was never because of that. And, you know, I was I learned how to be confident when it was I was used to being a big guy. It wasn't that. So it was more that I knew I was heavy and I know life. You got less life. I just knew it. Yeah. And you got your kids and you want to. Yes. Feed them. So I knew off the top when my mom was getting sick. OK, I got to lose weight. So I just started training. So I never knew what was my max, but I knew I was uh, over 350, 360, mm -hmm. 370. I had to be at points, you know, right. around there, you know, but over 350 always. That's why I was fluctuating. And then but I know I was just training to keep my brain right and to get healthy. So I wasn't looking at the scale. It was nothing for the scale. I had to go to the doctor for something. It was my first time at the doctor in a while. And, and they go, OK, how much you weigh? And I said, oh, I'm 300 something at least. And the guy looked at me and he was like, no way. If you're 300 something, you hold the gun. And I'm like, you know, I've always been 300 something in my head. I can't remember when I wasn't, you know, yeah. I got on the scale. This was, you know, a while back. And I was at that time three, uh, like 368, 268. And I was like, what? 368? 268. I'm sorry. Oh. And I was like, oh, shit. This was after like eight months of training. But I was like. Oh, shit, I'm in the 200s. I never because I wasn't looking at the scale. Then I said, OK, now I'm a monitor that motivation. Now I'm a monitor. When that happened, that's when I called up and I said, OK. And then, you know, I started, you know, basically counting my cal. I watch calories. That's a thing. Watching how much calories you eat a day. You know that it's just yeah. common sense. You you want to eat, you know, you eat less, you lose weight. It's just, just what it is. So what you want to do? Eat things that got less calories because calories gain weight you know exactly. and, if, if you, and if you eat calories try to eat calories that are going to help the mission at hand so i eat protein because i want to get muscle so eat protein instead you know what i mean you got to fucking yeah. and it's funny i've done all this stuff many times yeah. in my past you know especially you know in prison when you had to do shit like, oh yeah you know this it's say yeah it's all but, that same but, shit back and back. It came back yeah. to circle. It said, come back but, and circle. But what it comes down to is, is that once you get thrown back into your household, you take care of everybody, you, you just, you're like, oh, I don't got the time. You do got the time, but you like make, you're tired. You yeah, just, it I sucks. Did, I just did all this stuff. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to lay down. <laughs> I know, Roger. Look, yeah. at, I end up at the gym. But being I, I, kind of, horrible. I go to five in the morning, not because on some, yeah, on some Navy SEAL shit. It's the only time where it's just for me, where yeah. I, I don't got my children. They're not going to call me or my father because I take care of my pops. Now yeah. he has a lot of things and nobody fucks with me. I go there for me. And you know what? I'm there because my mission is I got to live. I need to see my children get old, um, um, get married. I want them to they got to bury me. I'm not going to bury them. Yeah. So I got to get to that point. So I got to every time I don't want to go. I know I, every time I don't do a push up, every time I do a push, I go, I got another hour alive. This is how I think. Yeah, that's I go, good. I got another hour alive. I go to the gym. I go another day alive. Even if I go there and just walk in and do whatever and walk out, I got one more day alive. And that's what I try to do. You know, we got to We got to keep um, giving ourselves treats, mental treats. You know, what that's I mean? true. And, and that's exactly it. You know, you know, plus, you know, being in, in, you know, a little crazy of a lifestyle, 
you know, what was great for me was man, being on the road, man, that, that was magical. You know, like you automatically start are in shape automatically. You're, you're in mode where up to a point, you know, as you, if you stay off too long, then you start falling off. Yeah. I was like, I was felt so good about myself again. <sighs> and, you know, just, and I was training, you know, I'm like, yeah. I know, I know, ah, I know oh, it's so frustrating. Good. And then, bam, fuck, now I got to do it all over, but I will. I know myself, <laughs> I will. Right now, it's just a little things, oh, I got to, oh, you know, my main focus, like I told you, I mean, I got, I, I, for the first time, I, I had to put myself first and get healthy because, man, if I don't get healthy, nobody else, yep. this, this ship ain't going nowhere. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and somebody brought up to me that same concept that they say in the airplane when they say the oxygen mask. Come yeah, down. I never you knew do, that. You, somebody you told you first. Me that. Why? So you're able to help everybody else. And it makes sense. But as a parent. Yeah, now, we put it stop that here right now. Let me stop. Right now. <laughs> That's a crazy ass thought. And I'm like, I what know. do you mean? I'm like, fuck that. Give me my kids. kids you know? Yeah, I, I I don't care if I don't get any. My kids, you know. Yeah. You're right, and and that was like so. Like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard as a parent because you say, okay, you have to do you first, and I'm like, yeah, you, it's like, and we feel you, your kids are everything. Yeah, they're everything. Like, what do you mean, me first? And I and it took a while for me to to process that. I'm like, yeah, I gotta do me first. I gotta get healthy because if I don't healthy, I'm not gonna be around for my kids. Yeah. And that's what, like, that. That was my my men's mindset, and it be, and it came right off with exactly what you said. I'm like, well, I don't get that, bro. Yeah, I'm no, for sure. That uh, for sure, and I'm like, man, thank God for our kids because that thing. I go, really, that's the reason because you know we could find every excuse to feel sorry for ourselves. Now you want to feel sorry for that kid. You look at yourself. You go, wow, I'm gonna feel really sorry that he's not gonna have a father now because I gave up. Fuck that. I'm not doing that to my kid. You crazy. Even yeah, when that, you know, you know, way that's we don't happening. we don't have that built in us. Some people could, some people don't give a shit. We don't yeah. got that built in us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's true. You know, and I'm glad. You know, we, you know, if even if good upbringing and bad upbringings, that's something that's good that's came out of us. That you know, that the kids mean that much to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which they should, because that's what they are. They're they're we bring them in. They're innocent as fuck. You know what I mean? They got nothing to do with nothing. They don't hate nothing. They yeah. love everything. You know, and anything that comes on that, it's our responsibility to, to make sure that, that that plant grows, you know, and, and, and we're responsible that, you know, and I learned that from my mother. That's why my mother, you know that, right? My mother, my house was like a halfway house for people mm, with no yeah. homes. But you know why? Because my mother never said, I go, this guy came out of prison. This guy was in jail. She never said, what did he do? What did he do? She goes, where's their parents? First thing she asked, where's the mother and the father? Oh, well, you know, he don't live with the mom or the mom. He lives with the moms. And the, you could always kind of see the broken home pattern. She knew already. And she go right away. All right. But, yo, there was. You know my house. Don't call and here's murderers, a bowl of food. Thieves. Here's yeah. a bowl of food. Here's a bowl of food. Here, this is house. Here's the house, and and not like, and people would not touch nothing in the house because they they got what they didn't have. But she always understood them, gave them the benefit of the doubt. Even when I would be like, yo, chill, or be a little bit more uh, um, judgmental, she'd be like, hey, hey, chill. What about this guy and that guy? You know, she would point out other people. What about them? Hey, everybody fucks up. Now, when they fuck up and they don't fix their faults and they keep crying. Okay. That's different, but you fucked up. And then she would like, you know, teach me like, Hey, you got to give people a chance. And I'm glad because you know, yeah. people gave me a chance. You yeah. Know? You got to give them a chance and you got to hope that people do fix this shit. I look, look all the shit I did when I was a teenager to now there's a mil there's probably a good 20, 20, 30 things that, 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 uh, that I would never do today as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, oh hell yeah, kid. so but I did it. You know, it was just a different time, a different place. But um, you know, my mind wasn't really fully developed, and it was it was some a little bit of a little bit of hatred and stuff, you know, from you know stuff. Yeah. I was troubled. Oh, yeah, anger. Now you know, I always say this. You know, I used to always say like that story, like, and this is a true story. I I once took a. Uh, and it's in one of my disaster songs. I tell a lot of great stories in the disasters because it's really, uh, it's my life being played out like my diary. But, and I sometimes I hide names of people so I don't get anybody involved. But I took a garbage can once and threw it through that McDonald's one on, on First Avenue and uh, 
in First Avenue and 7th Street. I threw the fucking thing broad daylight because I was I was anti anti McDonald's, anti <laughs> anti Big thing. Mac. And I threw it. I was with my friends. I'm like, wow, I was crazy. You know, hanging on the street, smashing the front. There, was, there were no cameras and shit. Yeah, back then. Uh, yeah. I, don't know. I did that right, and I was like, yeah, walking the street. But today. I think about, man, if I, you know, now how to be smarter, I would go in, you know, if, if I wanted to, to, and I still don't, my kids never ate McDonald's or shit like that, but I would just go into the, to the lock, put a little glue and toothpick and put it in there, just interrupt it for a little bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> times are changing, there's cameras everywhere, but you did crazy shit, you know? Yeah, but you know what, Adam, with Roger, you finessed. Your, your, I figured your, out how to upset the system without fucking throwing a garbage Oh, can. you perfected upsetting <laughs> systems. Yeah. I, there's a lot of walking proofs like Craig Ahead, oh, uh, yeah. Maddie Henderson. Those are uh, fucking systems that are never work the same after you. Yeah. Those Never tell you about the art show I was gonna have. Well, well you know no, about the art show. Well, Remember when I got, when I first got out of prison, right? He was like, "Oh, what's up with Roger? What's he doing?" So I was I was telling him I was gonna do an art show. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, and and it was gonna be a uh, an art. I, I was I learned how to do art in prison. I was doing an art show, and it never fucking happened, man. And it was it was so good. It was so planned among like all the people. I was I was just gonna. This was the plan. They're like, "Well, what? I'm like, I just want two X's on the floor." <laughs> And they were like, what? I'm gonna invite all my friends. I was gonna put Squirm on one and put Craig on the other. And like, these are my masterpieces. <laughs> like, I am an artist. And everybody would, and, and I, the last man, I'm like, I can't do that. You know, those guys are still, they're still distraught by it. Oh, you know? oh hands they're down. Still, they're still, like I see in their eyes, I see, I see when I look, when I talk to Craig and he looks at me strange. He has a twist. He's, he has a that's, twitch. That's the Roger twitch. Okay, no, that's Roger. Worm's never been the same. He did that freaking dance with once. <laughs> and he's like, let me ask you, where is he? Where's Squirm at now? He's very far away from me. Oh, and I, I, I remember he's a smart man. He's, like, he's, a, he's a upset New York. But yo, I never see anything like that, Hoya. He jumped out of the van and he was jumping on one foot going, yeah, 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 I know. And he looked, and he possessed. And like we were going to Puerto Rico, and then, then Stigma had a, a, a an epileptic attack. I remember hearing about yeah, that when he came banana. back. He almost died in the air. And airplane. Craig took the banana, and he was eating the banana. Stigma's down, like what? It was all because of squirm. He was uh, just like, oh, he threw the malaks. He he gave us the lot. He know, threw the malaks in there. He threw the raka so rakas. These, these dudes are my best friends, bro. You know I love them. You know it's yeah. it's funny because and we we. Dude, we did a lot of crazy shit with each other, but we we always loved each other. Man, it, we, we it was crazy, bro. Yeah, you know? yeah, it, it's all crazy. I, I think about it all the time. I was like, you know, you know, when you take them, um, like just young people, whatever it is, just young people, and and they're living on their own on the move, yeah. like and living like not. It's not no. It ain't. Oh, you know. Oh, we get roommates and we rent out an apartment out. You know, two blocks from our college. You know, our dorm is like, nah, this is different lifestyle. We grow up, you know, going to different places and different scenarios. And I think about it now, like my kid, my oldest is 13. And I think about him, what, in like two years, what, going in a van saying, I'm going to go to California and play. Nig nigga, I'll beat the crap out of you right now. Yo, you want, you want to hear something funny? What? I look at my son, he's 12 now. And I, and I look at him like, what the fuck was I thinking <laughs> bringing Freddie around at six? Oh, oh man, show exactly. six years old. Well, six you see old. exactly what happened. You got walking CB, proof. I see me, Jimmy's. I got that. You seen that picture? Yes. That little hair spiked up. He's with my That's girl. Your, he, time. he was six, and at seven, he's singing agnostic front songs at Great Gildersleeves. I'm like, what the fuck was wrong with me? I'm bringing your him, fault. I'm bringing everything that. Home criminals everything that ever happened to him is your fault i told you that it's your fault and i look yeah. at my son I'm like yeah right <laughs> and he yeah, did yeah. it my son my son did his first his first stage dive uh 2019 and and the whole room held him up you yeah know? it was really cool he still has a, a right by his bed it has a, the flyer of the show oh, dog. And, and he has a picture of me it says best dad ever and it was his first stage dive but you oh, know, but yeah, Freddie yeah. was Freddie was like he was diving into rats. And oh, into he was in, <laughs> he was in the mix. <laughs> he like, was in the mix. mix. And now, like you say, you look at your kid. No, nah, you're not gonna. I'm like, look at my kid. I'm like, why well, ain't gonna be no Freddie? <laughs> Yo, when the head came out, the doctor was Johnny Stiff with the mask. Yeah. Did I ever tell you I dropped him when I was a kid? Oh no, but no, what happened? What you did? I think yeah, you mentioned something. Yo, I wanted to hold him so so my we're going to his very first doctor visit. 
right? And, and, and when we were with my mom, and I'm no, I want him alone in her good Freddy. So we're going up the stairs. Boom, I dropped him. Oh. He, fucking, he landed on the stairs, like right on the, on the stairs. He landed, and he's like this, looking at me. And my mom's hitting me on the top of the head, <laughs> you know? Call you, man. I beat me. I'm going to try to pick him up. I dropped him. So I think I, that's where it all started. That's right. Yeah, maybe it started there. Maybe it started at freaking CBGBs or whatever, Gilded Squats. I got videos of some serious crazy shit in the van the the, the breaking of the van that's yeah. the one that gotta oh, be like yeah the breaking him in the van like just oh. toughen him up like he's fighting with everybody he's crying he he goes on a we're stuck in we were we we're on our way to dc he was uh he was like 10 years old and we're stuck in a, on the highway and he got so pissed off he for some reason he jumps out of the van we're on we're on a on highway but you know traffic and he's throwing fucking rocks at the van <laughs> everybody's all these cars everybody's what's going on this kid and then and he's throwing rocks at the van and everybody's like, go get him go get him we got to stop him and he's hitting the van pop, pop. He's <laughs> the video you know another time when we were in florida it was 1986 and, and we were down in florida and we were like crazy you know we we found like a, a, a one of those heads with those trunks bull's head like a skull we we we're like, oh, this is cool. We bought it at a truck stop, whatever. We tied it to the front of the van. We we're just crazy, right? And we got Freddie to do like a bunch of shows with us to, to hang out for like the five shows in Florida. Uh, we got pulled over by the cops, and the cops who separated, but they were separating him to, to tell us the truth. Where did these guys get you from? They thought we kidnapped him. And it was right after that, 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 you know, that guy had his son that was kidnapped and they, they beheaded him. America's most wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, around yeah. that time. Oh. So it, it took forever to convince the police to, for him to convince me. No, that's my brother. They like, thought we kidnapped. Him. That's they're like you're like I dropped them. Don't worry, it's fine. Yeah, he's, I dropped his ass, bro. Drop him, man. He sucker. I yeah, he wasn't yeah, a you, sucker, but yeah, I dropped you, his ass. You dropped his ass. That was it. That was it. And, and it's it's cra and now it's crazy. Now let, let me ask you this right now, since. I know you you just started getting back in the mix of it. I know the last AF record came out during this whole shit, right? It came out in, the, it came out in December of 2019. We were just about yeah. the tour. Not, 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 obviously, we don't know what the, how the next a bunch of months are or what's what, and also your health. What's it looking as far as um eventually you getting back on stage? Let's say... First, health wise, how, what what would it look like for you to be get on stage wise if everything goes smooth? You keep you know getting well, better and whatever. When could uh, when could we see you back on a stage? Let's say like that. You say that I'm like I'm like I'm <laughs> killing right now. But <laughs> the truth is, I'm still under doctor care, and I'm I go there uh, once a month. This other guy every three months, another one. I just flew to Seattle. I was just in Seattle. Oh shit! About uh uh. uh I was just in Seattle Monday and uh, I had to go see a doctor Tuesday and came back home Wednesday. Just like that. I went to oh, go see a specialist shit. in Seattle because I'm like, I can't keep playing these games. And if, if, I got two other concerns, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I'm not completely out of the woods. I was the one that was really bad, but I got two other concerns. I'm like, I want to get the best opinion. Somebody told me about this doctor up there. So I flew up there, gotcha. which is the first time I ever flew. It was weird. Oh, but I did. I'm like, I gotta go. He's he fitted me in. He right. scanned everything, and he, and I'll know in two 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 more weeks. So I gotta get all these clearances. But I'm I'm up being optimistic, being positive. Yeah. I just gotta yeah. I just gotta figure out how to get moving again and be because you know you do sing, you sing from your from your gut, yeah. you know from, and, and that's got something's gotta be worked. But I keep leaving things scheduled. Like there's there's a tour we're supposed to, we're supposed to we were supposed to tour in March I, yeah. in a way I'm glad we're not now yeah too close that's pretty yeah. damn close absolutely but I was like leaving things open and I, you know me bro I I would I've been out there in Europe with a with, with a shoulder surgery. yeah yeah no for you sure that. I yeah. had a shoulder surgery uh, five days later I'm on tour <laughs> and I'm playing with a yeah with a rotator no cuff. for sure I know if you could you would. In, in, a, in a perfect world of everything went smooth, let's say six month, months, months, six no, no. months. Well, I'm we're supposed to tour in May. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm hoping. So you're hoping maybe still okay. Because gotcha. we still have those sick of it all AF tours. I, we, I saw that. Everything, everything keeps getting pushed. And if I, if, you know, I have to take, I have to figure out one thing or another. I'm, I, you know, it's hard. You know, you hit the stage 
and you're like, I'm gonna take it easy. That don't happen. Yeah, that's fine. You just get boom, you just go crazy. But I really gotta take it easy because I either gotta focus on taking yeah. breathing because because I gotta sing, or just jump around like a jerk and let everybody else sing. Yeah, but I can't do both right now, and I'm still not ready. I'm still there's still some uh, nerve damage I'm dealing with. I mean, gotcha. I'm in I'm in PT uh, physical therapy for one and the other one because it was it was attached to a nerve bundle, gotcha. the whole capsule. And uh, it was a hard, it was a serious the first operation. They had to pull my my bladder off, everything. Ooh. Everything was moved out of the way. And they told, the doctor told my wife that there's possible some nerve damage because it was attached to a nerve bundle. Mm. It was, it was it, they thought it was going to be like a two and a half hour surgery. It was almost almost six hours. Yeah, I heard, yeah. And they, they had to go really careful around the nerves. Sure, you there's two about. issues I'm dealing with. And one of them, PT is working the other one. I don't know yet. But they say, give it some time. I mean, you know, like the, the surgery I got, like, <laughs> it's like 5% only have the uh, the side effects I have. Lucky me, I'm in the 5%. <laughs> and only 1% can't get out of it. I'm like, I don't want to be that lucky. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't that like, yeah, yeah. Like, geez, Maybe geez. you just got fell in that. You use your percentage up on that, but you yeah, won't fall in the other on, one. Man. Cut me one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, cut me one. Give me a break. So I'm dealing with that. But I keep believing things, you know, I keep believing things. And I, you know, my band's been there with me and I, f- I feel bad, you know, everybody's hoping on everything to come back around because, you know, we're, our whole livelihoods for all of us, not just myself. Everybody, yeah, you know, everybody is livelihood over here. I don't know what happened to this. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an, you know, you know how it is. If, if we can't, if one of us can't do something, it affects all of us. All of us yeah. And I hate holding up my band, you know. But no. I'm hoping that I re- this May shit kicks off. Even if I have to take it, even if I truly have to take it easy and my band steps up and I think the people yeah, understand. Absolutely. You yeah. know, as long as they hear the songs and it feels good. And you and know, you could, you know that, you know, and you know the job, but just hand the mic off every so often. Yeah, if I got to. <laughs> you know, not that you like to do that. You know, not saying that you like to do that or not. Not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm selfish. I want it all for me. I want it all. <laughs> No, but you have you thought about um, have you been like singing around the house just in general, just to, you know, you you might try to start doing that, like just in general, yeah. just to. I was gonna walk, do that while walking. you're walking around, just hey, got to see while you're moving around, just to. Yeah. I just to, don't want to scare the neighbors because there ain't no singing. Too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> Yo, they they'll be calling you the cops. They'll be saying, "You're some crazy guy walking around screaming." That's it. But so okay, <laughs> but yeah. So in a perfect world, you're hoping, you know, okay, good, you could get some shit, you know. If she gets booked and could get booked and you're feeling in May in a perfect world, May is going to pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing for, sure. for sure. Hopefully festivals in a perfect world because we all need, you know, not, only, not the world needs it. All, all of us for our own mental state because it's kind of depressing what's been going very, on for us, good. you know. Not only, I mean, besides putting all this shit aside, this, is a, this has been our livelihood and our career, whatever. We love this, yes. man. We're so passionate about people don't understand that. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't understand it. This has been our passion. This has been something we love. This is what's kept us alive. And you're pulling the plug on our, basically our life support. Everything. Because I tell you, like, I would, I would, I would look at some of my friends and some of my, my kids dropping off the kids and parents, and I'd be like looking at some of these dads. I'm like, man, these dudes are shot. They're, 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 they're done, whatever. And, and not that I. Eh, but I think that we're doing what I was doing kept me alive and young oh, and, yes. and connected with the people. Like these people are out of touch. They're going home and they're just, well, I feel Yo, bad. I see some dudes and they're like, not that I'm whatever or whatever. And they're like, yo, I'm 32 years old and I'm looking at them and they look like they're, you know, just they haven't lived. You could tell they went to school, did their job. Not that there's nothing wrong with that or whatever. But like, I feel they like, you know, we got our money's worth. We got, we're, we still want more, but we've definitely been getting our money's worth. And we're in life. living, like I yes. tell everybody, we're living our, we're living our retirement right now. Yes. And then when we get old, we'll deal with it. But man, yeah. we've, been, we've been living and, and it's, it's been a hell of a life. It's been hard. I mean, I <laughs> squats, everything in the world still continuous and whatever, but, but you know, I, and I think of that, all that shit, because I also justify that because Going back to like, you know, the GoFundMe's and that shit, being the dudes we are, you know, we're like, man, you know, we feel, you know, we don't like, we feel like we owe people when it ain't about that because of that. It's like, yo, you know, sticking through the years, doing all those things. That's why people 
I'm recognizing, and it ain't like out of charities because they got some, you know, I had to realize this. They're like, dude, I'm not giving you this on some charity shit. They're like, yo, if you knew what you did for me, this is nothing. And they exactly. go, yo, I wish I could, you know, I had dudes when this thing happened, I got goosebumps. They were like, dude, I don't got much, but you come over here at me. I live with my two children and my wife. I have a bedroom for you and your children. If you need, yeah. dude, you know, I'm like, this is insane. They got I had nothing. The same, I had the same stuff, bro. I had people like, I, I'm like, this one guy threw like 3,000. I'm like, oh, I'm like, who is this guy? And it turned out to be, he also got, he also won the, that, that, some other dude made this cool ass cleaver. You seen I've seen cleaver? that dog, yeah. And he, he had the highest pay. I'm like, I gotta thank this guy, man. This guy just spent 3,000 to put 3,000 on my girlfriend. He just paid 3,500 for a cleaver. I'm like, this guy ain't getting away with just like the way yeah. it is. And I've been thanking a lot of people too, of you know. Of course, yeah. And I'm like, who? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I looked him up, I found him. Mm. And he's my friend now on Facebook. And then he's like, man, I've been into you guys for, I live a little bit upstate New York. Yeah. I got all your records. I got all this stuff. That's dope. And then he he's like, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a lawyer now, and I'm like, because I saw he was a lawyer. He goes, I, I do environmental, so I, I I do good law. Like I yeah yeah yeah. If you're spilling some stuff and whatever. If you hurting the environment, I'm on your ass. You, gotcha. you know. <laughs> so dope. this is a what I'm doing for you is a, another good thing that I like to do, and I love you. I grew up with you from United Blood. You you guys are always and I was like. Thank you. You know, it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, like, hell yeah. So much. And, and, and so many people. And there's so many people I can't thank. And there's people I forget. There's, there was people doing shit all over the world. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a record somewhere. Yeah, no. There's not shows sure. somewhere. Also, I'll be getting these drop-ins from a show. The show, a, yep. a t-shirt made in Japan. Uh, and, and it was just like, thank you. Thank yeah, you so hell yeah. Really hell grateful, yeah. you know? Hell yeah. And you and did that, one too, you know? Yeah, like, and I was great. like, yeah, but that's... You kidding me? That's like the least of it. It was like, man, we everybody wish they could do more. You know, people want to do something like, yeah. yo, you know, like like you were saying before, we love this shit that this much. This is why we love why I do the podcast. I'm not doing it for the millions of dollars that I get from the podcast. Oh, I Obviously, thought you were getting a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, I go one, you know, it, it keeps the band alive during a time when we're not able to do our thing. It keeps our world connected. Not just this, all podcasts. I tell people in our world right now, in these hardcore punk rock podcasts, these are the closest things to the news channels of our world at the moment. Right now, not that we're giving the new, but this is real time, no bullshit, whatever we're talking about, ain't nobody influenced on these conversations now. So, we should be glad that we have these platforms still. And we love this shit that much that I'm like, yo, we got to do this. Like, you know, not on some corny shit. I always say we got to feed the scene. And I don't mean just me. I'm like everybody, if it's the podcast, the promoters, you know, it all works together. I go, this is how this shit keeps going. And I go, when you look how far it went from, like you talk about being fucking <clears throat> 10 dudes, 15 dudes, 20 people, 30 people outside a club downtown till you see that Indonesia, New Zealand, Norway, you know, there's clubs based around this movement that you had a lot to do with, Rod. That's and, why people, you know. And, and you know what's what's amazing, Hoya, is that I, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not trying to diss nobody, but I'll tell you right now, New York hardcore is one of the one of the especially all the early New York or agnostic front setting one for sure was one of the only hardcore scenes that has bridged the world. We bought people. We people really relate to to uh, yeah. I, I you know you know some of the struggles. Like I mean, if you listen to Victim in Pain now, you walk down the street in Lower East Side, you're like, what the hell was this guy talking about? But you know, it was a it was a whole yeah. different world back then. Oh yeah, and those people that relate to some of that stuff are living in that world. Today and you, and you want to know, Roger, that record right now is coming back into life. Yeah, right now it's coming just, back to life. I'm just saying that New York. But yeah, no, for sure. One of those scenes that really bridged the world together. For know? sure, I tell people that I go, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's it's just, it's a special thing because how big the community part of this world is. It's bigger than the actual sound because the sound became a lot of things, but the attitude. It's like you know. You see, you could be a metal guy, right? And I love metal, but you could be a metal guy. You see a guy with a Metallica shirt. Okay, it's a, you know, you might have zero, zero, zero in common. 
you go buy a hardcore kid and you see a chrome extra to af shirt it's a little bit you could kind of pinpoint more it's not yeah. as broad you kind of know like oh, okay they know within the within now let's see what's up because it's not like oh the rollins band or some that's more po- on, the, on the popular side of our culture you know and like the work dogs of the world. Then you're like, oh shit, it's like a secret society. I yeah. love it. You know, yeah. I see, I'll stop, you know, I'll stop by people on the street. I've done it around here. I saw a kid with, uh, he had a chain of strength shirt, an older kid, like uh, some surfer Florida guy. And I walked by him, I go, nice shirt. He goes, yeah, it's a band. I go, cool. Yeah, he's not. He, like, he I didn't like, know. But I he didn't know, but I loved it. I was like, yo, that's dope. Like, you know, they still exist. Like, you know, I get amped. That's all great. And you know what's great too is like you know you saying all that stuff true about all the old bands, but I think what's kept bands like my band, your band, you know some of some some of us active bands have been around for a long time touring, not just the New York bands, but a lot of them is that we always bring all these other bands, younger bands, and and there's so much gratitude in that. Not only that is that you I can't sit here and be like I did everything, I heard everything, I could write everything, I don't need nobody, and I'm the best. I can't do that because subconsciously like back then i go on tour with some of these bands and i pick up shit whether yeah. i do consciously or subconsciously and we're influencing each other no matter what oh, i go on tour with some young band and i'm watching them every day somehow some way something got in my head that influenced me to write a song yeah. or influence the guys a riff and you know like it, that's how this scene has always been like and and, and keeping that connectivity with the youth and 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 you know and what we do because you know we're old school and you know we're ogs and this stuff but keeping that contact is really and being genuine is being is really the secret to to uh to to longevity like yeah. who the hell wants to be a part of something that's not real yeah no for sure i agree <laughs> and, and that's the thing i'm liking about as crazy as uh, we could go into that whole bullshit of like, you know, when shit gets too commercial, obviously she gets fucking yeah. played out. But there's one, the good part I'm taking that I'm taking out of some of these bands. Now I'll use turnstile, for instance, I, I I'm psyched for them. Not because I'm just I got love for them and we came up with all their bands. But those are hardcore kids. That band is you could hear that the. It has a lot of traditional hardcore elements still to it. They're not trying to be the metal side of what became hardcore. They use elements with their own flavor and they they still tell you they're hardcore kids. You know, they come from hardcore bands that were in the mix. And I love that now. Let them blow up because they, they it's 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 a still more a purer face of what we are getting represented in there than some of these other bands that had former punk people in them or hardcore people in them. You know what I mean? It's absolutely close, close enough. Okay, good. You get a turnstile and you start getting these other bands that bring in the right vibe in. And that brings people to look at the history and find out the history. You know, that's how this shit history. keeps going. Yeah. You know, I, I try to tell people, I go, I go, we're to blame if the next generation don't know yeah. where to blame. It's pedigree stuff, you know? It's like breeding dogs. Yeah, 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 you <laughs> we're know? We're like the great, 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 great grandparents, you know? Agnostic Front bred with Madball. Yeah, and, yeah. And then, and then boom, or Agnostic Front, they, they crossed over with Sickle. Or boom, yeah, boom, exactly. Like, and you got these like inbred pedigree. called them. And then you got these inbreds Just, called them. Yeah, dude, that's when you got to be careful. That's when you got brick by brick, the inbred. Yo, shout out to <laughs> Millennium brick by brick. Yeah, the inbred. That's a great yeah. one. I wanted to ask you this. This is the question that I had. Because there's a lot of talks we heard. We all know hardcore, the word hardcore came from hardcore punk. You know, we know. Was there a specific m- moment or was it specifically a, a, a city or, an, or a, 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 an area that started just saying, no, we're just calling it hardcore and making it this become this kind of you know, a, that, that, sub that, of a sub? That's a good question because I mean there was a band DOA came out with a record hardcore. Okay. And that's where the term was really started from DOA and DOA started tar- touring their hardcore tour or whatever. But it's really interesting you say that because even me, I'll tell you right now, Victim of Pain, to me, I never said it was a hardcore record. It was a punk record. Uh-huh. You know, so and you then, said, but, but like you said. At that specific time in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, what was going on is 
punk was either going new wave or there was hardcore that was still punk. Mm, so you either okay. go new, yes. So we, you know, next thing you started, oh, this is like hardcore, real punk, hardcore. Gotcha. Punk, yeah, yeah. Hardcore. Then next thing you know, it was like, like even ask Ian McKay, there was only four rules of being straight edge. Next thing you know, there's like a million rules of being straight edge. Yeah. And there's a million types of hardcore. I keep hearing all kinds of crazy terms of hardcore. Like brain core and yeah, like, oh man. yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I always knew obviously hardcore punk, it was the harder edge side of punk. You know, we know that part, but that was like, was it a like a northeast thing that they would just no. start calling it the hardcore thing, or it just exactly so the DOA had the term and then DOA they, branded the term pretty much yeah. with that album hardcore. And they branded it, but then you know, there was a lot of stuff going on, like for example, in the LA scene which i always loved a lot like the germs and all those bands yeah. down there you know and all of a sudden you had you know black flag come out and do yeah. like aggressive stuff and then circle jerks like if yeah. you look at that record of uh western civilization record um that penelope did that that or, or that film that was incredible because you start to see how out of this punkyish pogo-ish type of thing yeah. All of a sudden, these kids going crazy. Gotcha, you know? they got, and yeah, it started winding up. And as it kept progressing, people just wanted to, to not be associated with the term punk, because punk was all of a sudden, especially in New York, too, was more related to more like, oh, fuck everything, drugs and rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, 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 black. People want something more positive, then minor threat comes around. And we need something <laughs> more youthful, yeah. and then hardcore took its own turn. But I think if you ask Ian McKay himself about his own records, he'll tell you they're just straight up punk records. Punk records, yeah. And then they became hardcore somehow, yeah. some way. And hey, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Because because I tell people, I'm like, I didn't come to shows the way later. My first shows was not to, I could, first show was in 88, but I was around it earlier because of my brother, rest in peace. Right. But even when my brother, you know, he got in, into it because of the harder, because he loved metal. So I never... When we heard, he was like, oh, I listen. We listen to hardcore here. Yeah, I like some punk, the exploited. But it was already a separation in the house. Like he was already like a hardcore kid. You know what I mean? And for me, all right, punk was, yeah, exploited. But to me, that was still, no, that's still close to punk. Because that shit was like very, yeah. you know, I when I heard the Sex Pistols, I heard too much. The candy for me at the time was like, no, nah, I want it. I liked more in your face kind Something of like aggressive. that was more, you know, I, I guess I wasn't around for that. So it was a little bit more my speed. But and then so hardcore for me, I was like, oh, no, that's the hardcore. Pa-. And, and then the punk band was nausea, let's yeah. say so. But yeah, it will be on the same band, you know, all right, AF. No, so I was like, oh, no, that's the punk band. That's the hardcore band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it, start, it started becoming like that, just like you yeah. said, when, and uh, it started getting subdivisions of subdivision. Today, we have so many subdivisions of subdivision. Yeah, and great. the truth of the point is we need to all come together and support one another, united and strong. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the truth. All those lyrics, they still stand the test of time. We need to figure out how to overcome all these barriers and overcome all these 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 separate we're separating ourselves it's ridiculous it's, it's not disgusting. even disgusting it used to be like we come together now we're a force now we're so apart and so different everybody's ragging on somebody you're not as straight edge because you're not vegan you're not you're not as it's vegan crazy. because you i mean it's just you know it's crazy it's rog it's just nuts man so i i took it at this when i was coming up at as far as the transition when i came into the music Punk was about still destroying, you know, breakdown. And hardcore was about rebuilding. Exactly. Right, na- right now, hardcore is, is re- right now, a lot of hardcore people are acting reverse, like bizarro land. They're destroying themselves. We're destroying ourselves from the inside out by yeah. dividing this. When back in the day, there's one thing I gave us credit back in the day. Even like, I hate saying back in the day because you're back in the day more than my back in the day. But even when I was going, to, I still caught where, at a hardcore show, you would have the Oi Skins. You have a punk rocker skater. You have uh, artsy. You might have uh, the gay guy. You might have the gothic dude. You know, everybody was there. Even if you didn't chill out together, they might still be there. You hung on your corner, but it was still part of everything. Everybody still, yeah, there was always somebody giving some political, uh, you know, punk yeah. rock guy, political shit. Then there was a straight edge kid uh, selling a demo, but it was, that was part of the, our community. Like exactly. now, it was, a, it was a community. Yeah. Now it's not. Now it's just people trying to 
be better than what like we are more elite than you you're not what you're really not yeah. hardcore. We're, well, this is hardcore this is elite yeah. this is what it's at the elite elite when it used to be just a community a community of different people learning how to live with each that's still uh-huh. new york bro but they, that's the whole thing new york always had that specialty because we learned to live with each other we're living in buildings with families on top of families each other bro, we have to. Did, we didn't have any of the crazy <laughs> shit that was going on all over the country because we knew how to live with people yeah it's different true. religion of different cultures, of different races. We sure. lived in that. We that didn't ever bother anybody if you're a New Yorker. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, know like, it's true. It's true. You got to be you live literally that community sense is what Agnostic Front always had. And we that's why I think a lot of people gravitated and related to us. Like, are this people, you know, but then like you know, things happen, you know, but I still like to say that when we play our show, we bring people together. We do. For sure. I feel like people come around, for, you know, there's old folks that show up that haven't been around for a long time. There's new kids and it's just about bringing people together, man. No, for still sure. To this day. And I think, um, I think now, you know, as crazy, there's a lot of division going on that sucks that we know within our own scene too. But I think in, in, in the positive out of all this, I think during these times, like, our community is also getting recognized a little bit more where some of the younger bands are starting to move up in the thing. And I think this downtime, people are appreciating the older guys like us that not having us remembering how, how great it was to have no AF was going to come in Madball two, three times a year in, in the area. Yeah. Now you don't got that for two or three years. You know, they I also think- had, exactly. But they had to show strength and, and support each other and go to each other's show like it used to be. Yeah. which is really good. So the next time like your AF or your Mabel goes around, you have that have, scene that's really together because they knew that this is all we had during these troubled times. So yeah. let's all be here. Let's all go here and let's put our indifferences aside and figure out what we do have in common. And let's, yeah. you know, work as a community. That's what I say. I say, yo, right now, you know, forget all that, that all the other, uh, the, the, the B's and the C's, the, the main thing that brought us, to this point was the music and we want more music so let everybody worry about how can we get more music the music we love and then once we got that going on everybody could go after the show and go argue all they want to whatever bullshit they want after they buy a t-shirt from casa the rock.com it's sold to you by hoy rock that's a great way to that's a great way to end this thing yeah but listen exactly roger let everybody know what's the deal so af we know you have some stuff have Real quick, have you been working on any lyrics yet or not? Or any ideas for upcoming stuff? Because you just went through some shit. Yeah, that's the whole thing. These guys, they've been working on music, but lyrically, my mind is just not right. there. I've okay, tried. Well, you don't need them. And, and, and I just, I need, I need to think about other things first. But I'm sure, you know, me, I always was, when I hear the music, the music speaks to me. So whatever they come up with, I'll hear something and then I'll take, I'll, I'll go off whatever that, that song that song gave me if it says oh man i feel i hear this line i run through the, the rest of it you know so it'll be fine yeah and um any um right now um you're just home dealing <clears throat> with the the hospital stuff yeah no, no work choice. no night no nothing just waiting for everything else to kick in then basically right yeah pretty much just trying to you know hold our family together good shit yeah i'm glad i see them everybody they, they, you got a good squad there you know, I see, uh, yeah, I see it. So, you know, again, we got to be happy. <clears throat> you know why? We got Wi-Fi. We got Agnostic Front still in the <laughs> fucking building. We got yeah. Roger still over here. We got, you know what I mean? We sell, stigma. Stigma. Uh, stigma. We got stigma here. Yeah, exactly. And I see some footage that changed my life. I don't even want to talk about it. Oh, yeah. But, but <clears throat> you're in. Uh, where could anybody get in contact with you? You got your Instagram or what, your Facebook, the AF? What, where? Yeah, all that's going, you know, we've been a little low key because I would do a lot of that, but I've been sick. So, um, you know, once everything starts going back in motion, when I start feeling better, I could, I feel like I need to, you know, do more. I'll do more, you know, but right now I need to, like I said, I need to put that mask on myself, this plane oh, yeah. going down. Then I'm, then everybody else is getting a mask. Sure. So that's where it's at right now. Um, right. Hopefully we'll be on the road in, in May. Hopefully if not, uh, June, if not September, we have to, our tours are the same, probably the same thing with you. They just keep getting moved every every year. They just yeah. it's the same tours. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, things will flow back, and hopefully, um, you know, get to see the world. Hopefully, hell yeah. But Roger, 
you look great. I really mean it. Your face looks good, dude. That's very, very fucking important when it, when people are fucking sick. That shit tells a lie. Turn it into like the Asians. The Asians are told by the skin. Shout out yes. to um, Warren and Royce and Nock. But um, <laughs> yo, I love you, Roger. You know what's up. You know, I'm I glad you I got too, you on. I didn't want to fucking bother you with this bullshit. I didn't want to get you to talk just for this shit. But I was like, a lot of people were asking for you. And I, I was like, man, it'd be dope. You know, people, you know, a lot of people, you know, ask me about you. You know, yeah, I'm, gl- I'm, know glad, I'm glad I did this too, Hoya, because this is the first thing I've done. First yeah. podcast, period. First yeah. thing. I, I, I jumped on a real quick thing with Drew, but it was yeah. a really quick thing. Yeah, I, for, I mean, literally like two, three minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, want, I want to say thank you to a lot of people, you know, but I'm glad this is the this is the first long thing. I'm I'm surprised I, I made it through. I've been yeah. avoiding because it's yeah, no, I know, I, I know how it goes. Stuff. I know it goes, but that's why I wanted to get you because I, I know with you it's different. I said we. I wanted to catch up with you anyway, just in general, because I know we haven't talked and there's been a lot of shit going yeah. on for this whole shit. But I was glad to get you on here because this is good. Everybody wanted to know what's up with you and that you're fucking doing good. We had to let motherfuckers see you, so that's a good thing, Roger. You know what's up. I love you. I, I'm yeah, glad you, you did this shit. Not only that, more than that, I'm glad you fucking good. You got this shit, dude. I, I already know. I already know. Mad yeah. love to your fam. You know what's up. I'm going to talk. I'll hit you this week, all right? All right, man. And we talk. Listen, Roger, I love you. Love you too, Oya. Oh, yeah. All right, man. One love, Roger. Be cool.